The reignition of the field of catastrophism can truly be traced back to one YouTube video in December of 2018. While the field never fully died, it largely lost its voice over the last few decades. Now, with new faces and better data to back up new and old hypotheses, we begin by asking how sure are we there is a catastrophe cycle, how do we know the next disaster is looming, and why is this different from other doomsday predictions? Well, the most robust among the evidence is that tying geomagnetic changes on the planet to significant biosphere stress. While these can vary from extinction of numerous species to thinning of numbers generally by 25 to 30 percent, even the lightest end of the scale is nothing to disrespect. These events seem to occur every 10 to 15,000 years, using the most liberal of windows, with significant evidence to peg it further. Around 60,000 years ago, we see evidence in both Vostok and Greenland data of a geomagnetic event. The Lachamp event just over 40,000 years ago was on the terrible end of the biosphere stress scale. The Mono Lake and Lake Mungo events in the high 30,000 and mid 20,000 years ago range were on the lower end of the biosphere stress scale, and the Gothenburg event coincided with a terrible period 12 to 13,000 years ago where most of the megafauna disappeared. The field peaked in strength now thousands of years ago and has been slowly decreasing again, until recently, when it hasn't been so slow. We maybe lost a percentage point or two of the field up to the 1800s, but perhaps coincidentally, the last near superflare produced by our star marked the beginning of the current accelerated shift in the magnetosphere, where 10% was lost by the year 2000, then 15% in 2010 according to the ESA Swarm mission documents, and we haven't yet received another update on that number, but we do know the magnetic pole position continues to shift, and the field weakening follows. In addition to various levels of extinction, including some continents being plainly hit harder than others, there are particular isotope and fossil tracks of elements you need NOVA to make, or which decay so rapidly you know this thing was made relatively recently in geologic and astronomical time. The signs point to a magnetic shift and major solar event at the zenith, and we're right on time for another event in the larger cycle, with Earth's magnetic field once again beginning to change in the exact way we'd expect, and it's accelerating. The breadth of the evidence is substantial, and when historical cycles match ongoing observations with the most dire implications, it becomes much more difficult to argue the pursuits lack merit. We get the days of darkness question a lot. Chances are most of you think this is a Christian prophecy of the future, but in fact there are both Mesoamerican and Egyptian accounts of the black sun. While I don't believe God or Jesus is going to sneak up and sackcloth headbag the sun like you see in the movies, the solar outburst event presents opportunities for darkened Helios both before and after. If the galactic current sheet were to deliver a solar wind glitching plasma magnetic instability, with or without extra dust deposited into the system, the coronal accumulation would darken the solar circle. Post-solar micronova, the dust lingering in the inner system and upper atmosphere could block out the sun for a while, and also, after its snake-like sheds its outer layer, there is no guaranteeing the sun wouldn't look almost like a black light ring due to the UV dominance gearing back up to return to the light-bringing phase of our star. Up next, the cover-up aspect, the people involved, and the timeline. This is Major White. He led the first expedition to the Arctic to find the magnetic pole, found the evidence of the magnetic reversal cycle, and delivered this information to the Pentagon in the 40s. In the late 40s, the Pentagon papers White gave to his son to publish after his death in a book called World in Peril showed that this was about a 12,000-year cycle of disaster. We made an entire video on that book, which we'll share at the end. Part of the government team at the time was Charles Hapgood, who was working for the OSS, which later morphed into the CIA. He was there for its creation. This is the guy who would parade around a decade later as a professor, publishing wickedly twisted and scientifically atrocious versions of the crustal displacement, while still working for the CIA. Armed with the foreword by Albert Einstein, which means he was also likely CIA, putting a blanket over the entire field of catastrophism to be neatly wrapped up and discarded when the disastrously flawed version Hapgood the Professor delivered failed. While they filtered money to anti-catastrophism studies through the NSF, they always debunked Hapgood's bad version, not the one we hear about in the book by Major White's son, and not what the Pentagon documents show. And at the same time, they were doing everything they could to keep Chan Thomas's version from seeing the light. 
The inclusion of part of his work in a declassified document is what allowed this field to begin anew back in 2018. The next question is what am I personally keeping an eye on? And it goes without saying, this is the Earth discharge aspect of the ongoing event we're in now. While the space weather events and the magnetic field updates help, the Earth electricity is key. Here is a video from our members section of suspiciousobservers.org to help explain a bit more. We're going to watch those lightning shots on repeat here because they are the subject of this video, and they aren't such bad background either. I've been referring to these as Earth discharge events, and that's the only way to describe them. This is not any sort of function of atmospheric electricity, or heat, or energy, or global warming, or pollution. These are upward return strikes from the ground of Earth. Veterans familiar with our lightning examinations in the high desert know that step leaders can string down and across and branch out. But when the ground circuit is connected, the bolt solidifies. You can see here that the constant multi-return stroke is from the Earth, and it represents a discharge of the Earth circuit. It found a way out. I mentioned these major bolts are a sign of what's unfolding on the planet, and that they should become more common as the natural side of this downward spiral unfolds. Here are a few reasons why. First, we are at the modern cosmic ray maximum and expecting to go higher. And that not only means more charging from the atmospheric circuit downward, but more direct penetration of those rays to the crust and mantle. The sun weakening is the major cause of those extra cosmic rays, but the weaker electric field of solar wind means there's also a lower potential outside of Earth while we take more in. Of course, the ionosphere is already taking more in, under duress and transferring that energy to the atmospheric circuit we just mentioned, due to the weaker magnetosphere of Earth. It may be making up for the lower solar output or more. So here we find the weaker magnetic field of Earth and of the Sun are both allowing in more of the particles that charge up the electric circuit and sometimes directly the ground, even if the ones coming from the Sun are lower. That lower output by the Sun, however, also means that the more capacitized Earth is in a decreasingly capacitized space. Of course, I'm talking about electricity and that energy in the Earth needs to discharge. It wants to. That's what energy does. The more it does so, the more we know control of our atmosphere is being lost to the electrodynamics of space. Lastly, often we get the question of where can I find blank? What's the timeline? Why a micronova? What's the sequence of events? Where should I move? What should I do? How should I prepare? We've got over 50 videos on this topic already, and let me show you what is where. Below this video in the description box, you can find links to our 2019 and 2020 playlists. The 2019 playlist actually includes those first videos in 2018, including our most watched video ever, a reading of chapter one of Chan Thomas's The Adam and Eve Story. Many can't stomach it and never even get to my postscript where I describe his version of disaster as being over the top and likely wrong in its unsurvivable severity. But what followed was a more than 20 part series that included everything from the past to the present to the physics to the mythology to the preparations taking place now behind the scenes and the cover up that put it there. More than five hours of material here is condensed into one film cosmic disaster. And this is where I highly recommend one begins, with the 2020 playlist. The 2019 playlist is there for those with extra hunger for detail, but the big picture and nearly all of its pieces are in that 2020 playlist first video, the full film. And similarly, that film was actually released in the second half of 2019, but we have since gone deeper in our battle with the Harvard professor on the danger of the event, explained the Nova triggers and various kinds of Nova, addressed the Janabekov effect, which you may have recently seen examined on Veritasium, covered the cover-up in pretty good detail in one video. We have two safe zone videos, and if you don't hear about your location in the first one, I probably have some rough news for you in the second one. We have also broken out a new field of evidence never seen before in catastrophism, watching the galactic sheet influence coming via influence on nearby objects. The stars in a line with the center of the galaxy have recently begun to go off, and in the expected order, with the sun next in line. First Barnard's star, then Proxima Centauri. A.D. Leonis just recently activated to superflare status to the galactic north, and there are magnetic changes already on every planet of the solar system with Pluto already having had its collapse. You may have recently heard it lost 20% of its atmosphere in less than three years. 
we are likely about nearing the halfway point through the galactic current sheet, and in the middle is where the scary elements are. Since Earth spends a few hours in the sun's current sheet every week or two, we likely spend about half of a millennium within the sheet, and then about 11,500 to 12,000 years out of it. The small changes we've seen over the last few centuries are building bigger and bigger. Regardless of what your question is, there is a great chance it is answered in these videos. And just look at the titles. They pretty accurately describe the contents of the video. Eyes open every day. Confidence over fear in the face of great and ominous odds, because we are all the descendants of survivors. I'll see you in the morning for the daily update. Be safe, everyone.